the flesh still cries out. And so what do I do with that? When, when I'm feeling that I still have same-sex attraction and, and wonder why, I have to go back in God's Word and look that, at, at what God has written and, and what He's provided for me to think about. And that is this. Everywhere that homosexuality is mentioned in God's Word, it's in a negative connotation. So, if that's the case, then how can I put myself in a situation where I'm going to cry out to God and ask for something that He doesn't give me? I, I don't have the iconic people in the Bible as, as, uh, um, as a relationship to follow that is same-sex attracted. You know, you have Adam and Eve. And that's what God has given us as a model throughout time, as well as other male-female individuals throughout God's Word. But He doesn't give us... Sure, there's Jonathan and David, and they had a love, an intimate love, but who are we to take and say that intimacy means sex? Because that's not what the Greek translation is. And so, they had a friendship, and they loved one another. And I think that it's possible to have that kind of relationship with someone today. But what God has described and what He has put for us is not something that we can turn and twist and put into our own words and our own self-truths based around how we feel. And so today I look at God's Word and everywhere considering that He's told me that um, homosexuality is sin, I believe Him. And so I want to do my best to seek to do His will, regardless, again, of how I feel. But people say, are you still tempted? And my response to them today is, are you? Because we're all tempted. It's just that I have a different cross. And that's what it is. It's a cross because God says to pick up your cross and walk and to follow Him. And if this is my cross, it's worth having physical sacrifice in order to, um, to have the kingdom, to have a relationship with Jesus Christ that I won't have if I don't accept His truth instead of my own.